harrowing words from Jesus, who just in the previous passage, which we heard last week, Jesus was calling Peter, you are no longer Simon, but Peter. You are this rock. On this rock I will build my church. And then Peter, I don't know if he thinks he's all that after that or what, and he starts thinking for himself instead of listening to what God the Father is saying to him. And he gives Jesus some good, solid human wisdom. But Jesus says, you're thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. He even says to him, get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. St. Paul says it another way. He says, do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. So often, we follow the wisdom of this world and the thought process of this world. And God says to us, no. No, I have a wisdom that goes beyond the wisdom of this world. It may not look pretty. The cross never does. But the resurrection is what it gets to. I'm not sure if any of you have ever done some needlework or looked at the back of somebody that's done needlework. Um, the back of it, if you're looking at it, you're saying, what is that? It's a mess. There's usually knots. and It doesn't look like anything of uh, uh, any sort of design. But you flip it over and then you see the picture that's being drawn. One side of the tapestry versus the other. And from this side of the tapestry, we don't see things clearly. But when we get to heaven, please God, when we get to heaven, then the whole tapestry will be laid out and we'll say, Oh! That's what God's been doing in my life the whole time. In the meantime, if we're trying to tell God how, we should, how He should be doing things, then we're going to mess up the ultimate picture. We were, um, towards the end of the spring, we were watching this video series called The Wild Goose about the Holy Spirit. And Father Dave Pavanka was putting this on on the videos. And one of the things he often said was, you know, if I were God, and it's a pretty good thing that I'm not. <laughs> And I think that's where we need to go, that we're not God. God has an incredible plan for us. But do we trust Him? Just thinking about prayer, for instance. The worldly understanding about prayer, from one perspective, is that our prayer is about we're going to try to convince God why we need something. We pray, and we pray, and we pray, and we hope that we can wear down God enough, like um, some parents we might have had to wear down growing up. While I was on vacation this week, at the house there was this uh, comic book, and my father was reading through the comic book out loud to us, which is always an interesting thing. Um, but he was reading this, and there's this one point where the kids are saying to their dad, Can we get a dog? No. 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 And they go on for a little while, and he says, Look, this house is too small for a dog. We just can't have a dog. Oh. Okay. Can we get a bigger house? Can we get a bigger house? Can we get a bigger house? That, that we think we can wear God down, but that's not the image at all. Prayer isn't about begging God for something and hoping that He'll give it, or, or saying the right words or the right formula, and, and maybe we'll get that magic formula so God will go poof and, and we'll get it. Prayer is about relationship. The psalm today that we sang, My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. And Pope Benedict put it this way, Prayer, the fathers of the church tell us, is nothing but becoming a longing for God. Prayer is nothing but becoming a longing for God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. There's prayer. Not trying to convince God of something. God knows what we need. He loves us. The only thing God wants from us 
is relationship. And when we start to long for Him, like a deer for flowing streams, when we start to long and thirst for Him, as our flesh pines out and our soul thirsts, like a land, like an earth parched, lifeless, and without water. And don't we wish that today was more like that than the rain that we had to go out in? But when we long for God, when we're saying, God, I need you. I need you. I need you in my life in this moment. I'm so struggling, God. I'm just broken, and I can't believe all these things that I'm doing in my life. When we can cry out to God and become that longing, that's real prayer. That's where we're renewing our minds. Not having the mind of the world, but having the mind of God. May we truly become that longing for God.